Welcome to video number seven in my series of presentations that will attempt to demystify tourism. I'm Dr. Stan McGahee, the creator and narrator of the videos. Their content is based on my experiences worldwide as a professor, consultant, writer, manager, and tourist in more than 80 countries on six continents. Although transportation is listed first among the four operational sectors of tourism because you have to get there, in my opinion, attractions, the to-do sector, is the most important. Without attractions, nobody would go anywhere and there would be no need to provide the facilities for sleeping and eating or anything else. But wherever there are attractions, the other sectors soon follow. Attractions define a destination. Their quality and quantity make a destination popular or nondescript, memorable or boring. The appeal of attractions makes you want to stay for an hour, a day, a week or longer and to visit only once or return again whenever possible. My definition of attractions is quite broad. It's whatever makes a place interesting enough to visit and stay a while. Attractions are based on two types of resources, natural and cultural, which includes man-made and built attractions. Primary attractions are the main purpose of a visit, while secondary attractions round out a stay at a destination or are visited while en route. Some attractions are part of the private sector, but many are government-owned, such as national parks and seashores, and some are free, such as the sunshine and surf of Hawaii, while others are paid, such as the museums and theme parks in Florida. Attractions that are based on natural resources range from mountains and beaches to sunshine and snowfall, plus all types of flora and fauna. Wildlife and sea life are the fauna most valuable to tourism. Any wonder that Tanzania's most popular attractions are its big five wildlife? Lions, leopards, elephants, rhinos, and Cape buffaloes? Sea life attracts tourists the world over to Australia's Great Barrier Reef, to snorkel, scuba dive, and sightsee from glass bottom boats. Nature's diversity worldwide is truly astounding, and it is indispensable to humankind and tourism. Cultural attractions include the things people make, perform, or do that interest you. Would you visit India without seeing the Taj Mahal? Or Cambodia without seeing Angkor Wat? Is a stay in Paris complete without visiting the Louvre? Or a tour of Oslo without seeing the vigil and sculptures? Would you enjoy dining at a potlatch with Eskimos? Or drinking scotch in a Scottish pub? How about attending a ballet in Moscow? Or an opera in Budapest? Would you like to run with the bulls in Pamplona? Or watch the carnival parade in Rio de Janeiro? Culture is people-based, and we are amazing too. The traditional tourist activity is sightseeing, especially the must-see sites such as the Colosseum in Rome or the Great Wall of China. Tourists visiting a destination as part of a tour itinerary normally see all the highlights. Those traveling independently can take a day tour, follow their guidebook, or use an app that directs them to the sites and provides a description. Sites that are clustered, such as in an historic old town, make popular itineraries. Other tourist activities include all types of recreation and sports, such as hiking, fishing, and skiing, and the all-time favorites, shopping, people watching, and pub crawling. A destination with a highly desirable attractions mix has enough variety at all price levels to satisfy various target markets, as well as everyone in a group, regardless of age, interest, or physical condition. And it has indoor and outdoor attractions that satisfy tourists regardless of the weather conditions or time of the year, and smoothing out seasonality helps keep the destination strong year-round. A major destination also has exciting attractions open every day of the week, with special events and activities during the holidays. A strong attractions mix makes the destination much easier to promote to multiple segments and source markets. Research shows that tourists want more active vacations, but it also shows an increased interest in entertainment. So both ends of the spectrum must be provided in the attractions mix. People are most attracted to other people. When we travel, we want to learn about other cultures and appreciate the beauty of their fine arts and performing arts. Entertainment is not only enjoyable, but can also reveal fascinating elements of history and modern culture not readily observed in daily life. Nightlife extends the excitement of each travel day to its fullest and enables us to socialize with locals on their own terms, meet other tourists, and sometimes find romance and intrigue. 
My favorite type of tourism is community tourism. In community tourism, tourists spend lots of time experiencing how and where the locals live. This involves staying in B&Bs or homestays, eating at non-touristy restaurants, engaging in local pastimes, and just walking through neighborhoods or rural areas. The idea is to make yourself available to connect with the local people and enjoy an authentic experience. In the process, you will spend less money and gain a greater appreciation of the places you visit. I agree with Rick Steves when he says the best way to enjoy a destination is to become a temporary local. Special interest tourism is traveling to enjoy an activity or a topic that is of special interest to you. Adventure travel and even some of its subsets such as trekking and whitewater rafting are popular forms of SIT. Religious tourism and spiritual tourism can soothe your soul, and wellness tourism, spa tourism, and medical tourism can improve your physical health. Of the many types of SIT, my favorite is event tourism. This includes attending festivals and events that may have been staged annually for centuries and feature ancient rituals and traditions. Plus there are ethnic festivals, sporting events, royal processions, beer and wine festivals, and many other types of events that celebrate just about anything imaginable. In ancient times, a small group of amazing places was named the Seven Wonders of the World. In modern times, UNESCO has designated a larger group of amazing places as World Heritage Sites. To be designated as a World Heritage Site, a destination or an attraction must meet certain natural or cultural criteria and go through a rigorous nomination and selection process. There are currently just over 1,000 World Heritage Sites with a vast majority being selected on their cultural merits. About 30 sites have been designated on both natural and cultural criteria, including Ocrid, Macedonia, where I was privileged to spend a year as a Fulbright professor at the Universität Sveti Klimat Oritsky. Attractions come in many forms and satisfy many interests. They are the drivers of tourism development, the principal reason tourists visit a destination, and the key components for destination setting, ambience, and tourism atmosphere. Now I invite you to watch video number eight, Accommodations. Thank you.